Shalom, everyone, and welcome back. I hope you all had a nice Purim here in Chabad University City. It was incredible, both at night where we had hundreds of people, with children, one incredible children's program, and during the daytime, our, our Purim meal and and the Megillah readings and everything, literally hundreds and hundreds of people participated and they had a wonderful time and a very meaningful time. This Torah portion this week is a special portion. It's the third of the four portions that we read before Passover. It's the portion of Para, Shabbos Para. It's a special mafter during the Torah reading. And uh, the Parsha deals with the, um, with the red heifer, the Para Duma. If a Jewish person became ritually impure, spiritually impure, not dirty, not unclean, but spiritually unclean, we'll explain what that means in a minute, they were to wait a certain period of time, or wait for the affliction to end, such as leprosy or things like that, and then they would be sprinkled with ashes of a special miraculous red cow, which was slaughtered and, and burnt, and the ashes mixed with water, and they would sprinkle him or her with the ashes, and it caused this person to be uh, spiritually pure, and they were able to resume their service in the temple and resume normal Jewish life. And the interesting thing is, what is the idea of spiritual purity and impurity all about? So it's something that is very not well known at all. It is connected with life and death itself. A person who is spiritually impure is considered as if they were dead or came in contact with the dead. The highest level of spiritual impurity is called in Hebrew avia vosatuma, and that is the dead person itself. The next level of a, of a tuma has to do with one who touches a dead body or someone who touches someone who touched a dead body. So death death is connected with impurity in Judaism, while, while life is purity. And we don't find this in, virtually, in many other cultures. Some do. Some have such a concept of purity and impurity, but not, not to the extent of Judaism. Today, when there's no temple, there's no need really for us to enter a temple, uh, the, the center of Jewish life. This is not a synagogue, but a temple. So therefore, the, impure, the level of impurity and impurity really doesn't really have much meaning for us. Uh, the only time it really does is the relationships between men and women, where a woman has her period and she enters into a spir spiritual level of impurity called a nida state, in which relations between husband and wife are not permitted. And the idea of Anida is that the potential life of the a woman in the egg is lost, and the egg is flushed out with the blood, and this leads her to be a level of spiritually impure. So it's connected also with the idea of, of, of a type of death, so to speak, the death of a, of a potential life. So what is this all about, purity and, and spirit and, and uh, impurity? <clears throat> so the idea is that Jewish people are very, very sensitive to spirituality, more than m most other peoples are. Well, we are affected deeply by godliness and by the level of godliness. If there's more godliness, there's more life. <clears throat> if there's less godliness, there's less life, and even to the extent of death, is the lack of godliness. Jewish people are sensitive to godliness. We're sensitive <clears throat> to God, to God's presence in our lives. And for that reason, Jewish people are, are a very unique nation, a very unique people, where, where prayer and Torah study and the observance of mitzvot, of the mitzvahs of the commandments of the Torah and what God wants are a very important part of our life, more than most other people's. So when a Jewish person does a mitzvah, <clears throat> they're connected closer with God. When they do an avera, a transgression, they are separating themselves more from God. The more separate we are, the fewer mitzvahs we do, the farther away from godliness we really are. The fifth Lubavitcher Rebbe used to say 
that uh, every Jew is connected to God as if with a strand. As it says, Yaakov Hevel Nachlaso, Yaakov is the, is the rope of his inheritance. And a rope has several strands, many strands, and each strand makes the rope stronger and stronger. Similarly, we Jewish people are connected to God through the 613 com- tra- strands of the commandments. Every single mitzvah makes us stronger in our connection with God. The more commandments we do, the stronger is our connection, our stronger is our attachment, and the fewer mitzvahs we do, is the, the weaker is our connection with God. To such extent that a Jew might only have one strand left. There could be maybe only one strand left, and a Jew might be totally assimilated not fulfill any mitzvahs at all, but there's one strand that always remains left for the Jew, and that is the fact that they are a Jew. B'shem Yisrael Yechuna, they are called by the name Jew. This itself for a Jew never goes away. A Jew is always connected with God through the essential godly soul that we all have. Each and every one of us, no matter how religious or irreligious, how connected we are or how lack of connection we have, every single Jew is connected with God. And every single Jew has that spark, what we call in Yiddish, the pintal Yid, the spark of godliness inside of them. And that is really what makes a Jew so unique in the world, that we have that spark of godliness inside of us. And we don't want to just leave it that way as a spark, as a little strand, as a weak strand between God. We want to flourish it. We want to grow it so that it becomes very strong in a fiery furnace of godly energy inside of us. And how do we do that? Through the observance of mitzvot. If you don't know about mitzvot, if you want to find out more about mitzvot, contact your local Chabad rabbi, and they will instruct you and teach you and show you how your godly spark can explode and flourish and bring out the very, very best in your spiritual potential. Let's all keep that in mind. Shalom, everyone. Candle lighting in San Diego is at 535. I want to remind you all that we're changing the clocks ahead an hour this Saturday night. So services in Shul and for Minchamar will be at 6.35, starting Sunday night. Everyone have a good Shabbos.